Hey everybody! <laughs> it's the spoiler cast with the podcast of Doom. A hey, episode four of season four, Oathkeeper. Oathkeeper. I'm yeah. Friar Dan. I'm that guy Todd. And yeah, Oathkeeper. Hey man, that was it was weird. You know, so many episodes have been about breaking things and mm. dying things, and this episode was not so much about that. No, it was that. It was it was more about the uh, characters talking to each other things. Right. Uh, Although actually, Daenerys was killing things. Yeah, that's true. So we'll start. I guess we'll start with there. Yeah, I'll start there because she was she was still she took Marine mm-hmm. in one night, basically by just breaking into the sewers and arming all the slaves and saying, "Hey, if you want to be free, you got to fight for your rights to party." Right. Exactly. I think that's the way it should have gone down. Mm-hmm. There's no there was no point in trying to you know sack the city. Yeah. Why why, why lay siege to this beautiful? Well fortified city, when you could just you know arm the people inside of it, and then just have them rebel against the uh, masters. And right. Suddenly your ar- army's bigger, and you have a city to yourself with its infrastructure. You got so, yeah. canals and foods and they kill body they houses. Every one of those masters too. Yeah. Sir Barrison's like, maybe you shouldn't kill all of them. You know, she's like, fuck that shit. Fuck that. They will die. They're dying, and then some. Makes me kind of wonder if the children of the city were also killed. The children of the masters? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, she doesn't seem like it's hyped to lay the sins of the father on the son. Right. But they're going to they're gonna definitely gonna be raised in a new environment. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't think they... I don't think... It looks like she didn't kill any of the wives of the masters either. It was mm-hmm. just the men. Just the males. So... I mean... She, yeah, she set an example. Mm. But she killed them in horrible, horrible ways. Well... The ones that survived the the initial sacking. Yeah, they got uh, they found themselves nailed to posts. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure the irony was not lost on them as they lay, no. as they were you know dehydrating in the sun. Not at all. You know, bleeding from multiple nail wounds to their uh, mm-hmm. extremities, and then she stood there at the top of the tallest pyramid in the city with her flag draped over their harpy, looking like a badass. Mm. We got to see uh, Grey Worm and Missandre. She's uh, teaching High Valyrian to Grey, Wa- Grey Worm. That was kind of interesting. You know, they're, they're both right. from, they both came from the Summer Isles, apparently. Mm. So they were both kidnapped from their homes at different ages. So some sort of connections being developed there. Although he's a he's a uh, eunuch, so I don't think it's going to be anything other than maybe right. just a brother sister kind of thing. Of thing yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. It was a little bit worrisome when he was like, uh, she's like, don't you want to see your home? And he's like, no, yeah. I have no home. I want to he's kill like, masters. He's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, kill all the masters. And it's like, wait, 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 is he talking about Daenerys? No. I don't not, think he is. She's not a master. She walked in right after that and they were just like, oh, shh, shh, yeah. we're not talking about that anymore. But, mm. you know. Well, see, I didn't pick up on that, but maybe. But it seems like it would be... Kind of shitty for him to turn on her when she basically made oh, him, yeah, no, it made him a general. And gave him, he was talking to the slaves. He's the one that freed the slaves in Marine, saying, you know, one day of freedom is worth a lifetime in chains. Right. Or is better than, rather. So, I don't think he's turning on Probably Daenerys. not. I just probably was reading too much into yeah, it. Yeah, it seems like I have a shitty way to... Uh, I think maybe they were both like freaking out because their hands were like almost touching each other. They were like, whoop, whoop. Like, you right, know, right. like junior high kids, you know, like touching hands in the hallway and then the teacher walks around the corner. Right. That's probably, that makes a lot more sense, I guess. And it makes it adorable. Oh, it does when you think about it. They touched hands. <laughs> so cute. So young. So, we, so young. So young. So young. So that's what's happening on that side of the world. Um, um, on the Westeros side of the world, there's. You know, the fallout still from Joffrey's death. Right. Cersei is still just being just ruthless to everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, we found out where Littlefinger is actually taking Sansa. Uh-huh. Um, we he's did. He's taking her to the Eyrie. Yep. Uh, to be, you know, with her aunts. And they uh, immediately, you know, let us in on who, the conspiracy to kill Joffrey, who was involved. Right. It was Littlefinger and Lady Elena of mm-hmm. the Tyrells. The Tyrells, man. They're on top of they're on yeah. top of their game. Littlefinger basically sold out the Lannisters and basically is joined hitched his uh, cart to the uh, Tyrells now, mm-hmm. and that was his gift to them to prove that his uh, friendship or loyalty mm-hmm. to the family to Marjorie he's... and Mace and Elena Tyrell mm-hmm. and I guess Loras. You know he's off there doing whatever. 
Um, it was really, yeah, I, I, I wasn't expecting them. Well, I had heard from other people that they didn't say who actually killed Joffrey until way later, like a, like a book later. Mm-hmm. And then we were talking about it while we were watching It's like, it doesn't make sense to hold off on it, because by the time we get back around to it, yeah. it's going to be like, oh yeah, that's old news. Well, so. It's not a mystery that would sustain tension right. for more than like two episodes. Right. So it makes perfect sense that they would say, yeah. so they reveal who, who actually did it now. Yeah, well, and it's good because it, it brings some of the uh, our main characters in into the in the know. Mm-hmm. You know, Sansa knows now, and you know he, before he even admitted it, he was having her kind of uh, little fingers having her kind of deduce who she thought didn't didn't do it, right? And kind of you know testing her wits to see what where she's at, and she did pretty well. Well, he wants her to play the game, you know. Yeah. He's teaching, he's teaching her to be at, yeah. to be like him. Right, exactly. You know, she's got nothing left. She's got mm-hmm. nothing. So she needs to be, right. she needs to learn quick how to play that game because she's not going to be able to survive on her, you know, with, on her looks and charms alone. Right. So he, Littlefinger clearly has uh, her best interests at heart, and the best interest is turning her into a ice cold, you know, sadistic mind fucker. Well, uh, yeah, at one time he did want to marry her and bed her, so... Yeah. Maybe he still wants to do that. It's possible. He's supposed to marry his her her, uh, her aunt, aunt yeah. but that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Like, when she asked him, he's like, I want, you know, it's all about what I want. She's like, well, what do you want? And he said, everything. Everything. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> it's like, okay. And he's but, in he's in good position to get what yeah. he wants right now. And there's nothing more dangerous than a man with limitless ambition. Right. And the... The uh, not the means necessarily, but the will to do whatever it takes. Right. So you have someone that's as smart and as clever and, and as ruthless as he is. Mm-hmm. That has literally no like cap right. to what he what he wants. He's not a guy that's going to ever settle and be happy for what he has. Mm-hmm. He always wants more, and that's dangerous. That is very dangerous. It's also he's a good ally, but you, he's always going to be a temporary ally because, like the Lannister found keep out, an eye on him all yeah, the time. If you become a uh, burden to his what he wants, mm-hmm. you get poisoned at yeah. your wedding. It don't matter if you're the fucking king. <laughs> if you if you become if you get in his way, or if you're going to impede his what he wants, mm. gone, he's gone, out of the picture, he's gone. Joffrey was being was out of control and mm. being a terrible king, so. He had to go. He had to go. Now his little brother is stepping up and becoming... Yeah. He will become king. And that's what uh, Marjorie, when she found out from her grandmother mm. that the that they were involved in this killing, that, you know, her grandmother, Elena, telling her, I was never going to let you marry that fucking hideous boy. Right. But now, you have Tommen. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, who is not cruel? And right now... You know, Cersei is not dumb. She's going to turn him against you, mm. but she's distracted right now. Right. So if you make so you the first move, and then you can turn, you know, Tommen against Cersei, then the kingdom is ours. Right. And so she goes and does that. She visits him in the middle of the night in his bedchamber. They have a really nice little conversation together. And, you know, she says, it's, you know, us talking and getting to know each other is going to be our little secret. Mm-hmm. And then we find out Tom has his cat, Sir Pounce. <laughs> and me and Todd made a lot of dick-sucking jokes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that did happen. suck your dick. Yeah, he's, he's, like, he's like 14, so... But he's, uh, he's you know, in that age. This, uh, uh, this, exqui- <laughs> this exquisitely beautiful woman crawls into your bed in the middle of the night and is like leaning into your face saying, we're going to have so many secrets that your mother won't know. <laughs> Like, yes, yeah. we are. And the, the, actor, the actor playing Tom, and he sold that just right. He did. That look of just like, okay, okay, okay. Yes. yes, yes, secrets, absolutely, okay, secrets. So yeah, I'm interested to see where that's going to go. Yeah. Definitely interested to see where that's going to go. Well, it's just like it's, it's just continuing the hit parade that every seems like every uh, maybe four episodes now, seriously loses another significant piece of her power. Right. They're and breaking she, her down. They're yeah, breaking her down. And as she's a taking it out on Jamie. She is. Although. He kind of has it coming to him after last week. Right. Like, they tried real quick to try to make Jamie sympathetic again this episode. They gave a lot of time to Jamie with training with Bronn to make mm-hmm. him look, you know, sympathetic. With uh, Tyrion, he goes to visit Tyrion, mm-hmm. and he believes Tyrion's innocent, and they have a little, you know, brotherly chat. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to, uh, and has Brienne come to his uh, chamber at the uh, Kingsguard. Right. And he gives her his Valyrian steel sword mm-hmm. that Tywin made for him. She gives her a new suit of armor, 
uh, a squire right. who we'll talk about, mm-hmm. and then a mission. Because Cersei orders Jamie to kill Sansa. Well, he, she doesn't order. She says, "If I order you, yeah. would you do it?" Because she's pissed that he basically made a a vow, an oath of honor to Catelyn, Catelyn Stark, right? That he would return the her, her daughters to her when he returned to King's Landing. That he swore in his honor he'd do that, right? So she's like, "You swore a you know an oath of honor to the enemy. You know what would you do if I ordered you to go out there and kill her?" Mm. And Jamie didn't give an answer. And how do you, he's like, "What if I ordered you to go out and hunt her down?" Yeah. So knowing what the fuck's going on, mm-hmm. and also knowing that it's probably not good for Brienne to stay in the city when Cersei's in her moods, right? He gets Brienne out of there. He says, "You're gonna find Sansa, and you're gonna protect her. She needs to be protected. You know, you're gonna you're gonna withhold or uphold, you know, Catelyn's mm-hmm. our oath to Catelyn, because I can't do it anymore." Right. So he gives her the sword, the armor. And then she acquires a squire, mm-hmm. a certain mm-hmm. uh, Podrick Payne. <laughs> Podrick! Recently out of work. <laughs> so, good old Pod. Now he's going to be squiring for Bri- Brienne as they go to save Sansa. Right. And since Jamie had never named his sword, he has Brienne name it since it's her sword now. Mm. And she names it Oathkeeper, mm. which was pretty awesome. That's an awesome name for a sword. It was a good moment there. And the thing is, it's like... Man, there, I don't know, it's such a weird aberration. Like, I don't know how to feel about that scene still last week mm-hmm. where, where Jamie rapes Cersei. It's like, because they're trying to make him look like a good guy again and make her look like a bad guy, but it's not that clean. Maybe that's the point, that it's not that clean cut. Mm-hmm. That neither of them are really necessarily absolutely good or absolutely bad. Right. But it's still, it's just, it's bothersome in context. Like, mm-hmm. nothing around it feels like... Like, the relationship obviously is strained to the point where they don't even refer to each other as, like, brother and sister or by name. Oh, yeah. You know, when he, when she summoned him, he called her Your Grace, and she mm-hmm. called him, you know, Captain of the King's Guard. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't use each other's names. Was it Lord, Lord Master, Lord Regent? Yeah, or Lo- like whatever that. the King's Guard, yeah. yeah. It's Knight Captain or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, that showed that it was strained, but it didn't necessarily feel like it was... That, like mm-hmm. where it should be after that the events of last week right so that kind of threw me off I'm not sure if there's something down the line if there's going to be a, like uh, another kind of like storyline mm-hmm. going to develop from that but still strange and Jamie believes Tyrion that is innocent mm-hmm. and he told Cersei as much and of course she didn't believe it she's already got her mind made up right which is you know unfortunate for I guess this, the sake of you know, her family and her own kind of, you know, uh, protecting her, her own source of power. Right. Because the fact that she's so fixated on Tyrion, she's not going to see the real threat has completely surrounded her. Right. She's very, she's losing, her. she's fighting the battle on all sides, but only paying attention to one side of yeah. it. Yeah. She's paying attention to the termites that are eating, like, the wall of the kitchen instead of the army that's sieging the gate. Right. It's like, yeah, Tyrion's always been a pain in your ass. Mm-hmm. And you've never got along with him. But, you know, he's not the guy. Right. And it's going to end up probably being her big, you know, downfall is that she gets so fixated and makes up her mind so quickly. Mm-hmm. And that she can't, that you know, like Tyrion said, that the murderer could, you know, come into the courtroom, drop on his knees... To confess and then give irrefutable evidence, and then she would still blame Tyrion. Right. Like, she's just, you know, so good. It's so emotional about it, and the fact that it, Tyrion just happened to be there, basically. Mm. So. And Jamie's even though that's, that's why you're having a trial, and he's like, oh, please, my sister will have me dead before the trial even happens. Yeah. She'll have my head on a spike mm. long before I could go to trial. So, and it'll be interesting to see if, they, you know, what happens there. Mm hmm. Because Tyrion's obviously defenseless right now. Right, he's got nothing. Podrick's gone. Well, and if it's any consolation, Bronn knows he's innocent too. Mm, believes right. that when they were Bronn and Jamie were having their training session, Bronn's the one that convinced Jamie to finally go see Tyrion. Right. You know, J- Jamie asked him, he's like, "Do you think he did it?" And Tyrion, Bronn's like, "No, mm. absolutely not." Yeah, it's like, no way. Like right. he's not a killer, and, he, and poison's not a style. If he was, did Bronn go with Brian? No. Oh, he was just there. He was okay. he was just there helping, you know, go on their the way. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't paying attention to how many horses left when they left. No, yeah, it was just the two. It was just uh, Brienne and Pod and, and Podrick, which will be a fun little sitcom of their own. <laughs> kind of, kind of like it'll be like the uh, 
the like karmic or polar opposite from Hound and Arya show. <laughs> be like you have Hound and Arya, and then you have Brienne and Pod, <laughs> and it's like like they're like the two sides of the coin. I could just see them like making like a Xena warrior princess intro with Brienne of Tarth mm-hmm. and Podrick. Yeah. And it just is like Brian of Tar. It's like it's like a nineties like action like WGN yeah. like that'd be hilarious to see someone make. It's like a guitar <laughs> like, <laughs> like just some like somebody, Hercules the legend yeah, continues. You so, know, so just riffing, <laughs> like just wanging with their guitar, just. <laughs> But no, she's off to go try to find and, and protect Sansa. Yep. Um, Who honestly probably doesn't need it. Bronze is not doing anything right now. He's still training. Uh, yeah. Still training. Uh, I think he's trying to keep his low profile. As, right. He's trying to stay off of Cersei's radar. It's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Not me. It's like Cersei and Tywin aren't paying attention to me right now. I'm gonna keep it that way. Right. Because I do not want to be get. I don't want attention paid to me. Mm. Speaking of attention getting paid to him, Mr. Jon Snow. Mm. Uh. You know, just by be by virtue of being Jon Snow, is of course got a target painted on his back right. again. And uh, you know, Alistair Thorne is you know usually just an you know unlikable cunt as usual. Mm-hmm. But then uh, he's got a little buddy there who's a bit more shrewd than Thorne is. Mister, mm-hmm. uh, I used to be the captain of the uh, city guard in you know King's Landing. Before Tyrion fired me, right for gross incompetence <laughs> and for being loyal to Cersei. Yeah, that so would do it. That guy, you know, for all his faults, he's he understands. He's like, look, you know, Mormont's dead, and we're gonna eventually have to choose a new captain. And he's popular, you know, referring to Jon Snow, mm. and you isn't. Right. So you might want to do right. do something about that. Right. And so uh, because they did that, well, because they decided that they decided to let Jon Snow go after. Uh, the uh, mutineers, the, uh, mutineers. Uh, yeah. but they wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't order anyone to go with them, so they had to get uh, volunteers. So to get volunteers. And one of the volunteers, a, a new recruit that's befriended John very quickly. Oh, it just happens to be uh, the Boltons' fucking you know thug, the one that cut off Jamie's hand. Right. And was there when uh, Theon was being tortured, and so that that pleasant fella mm-hmm. is now going to be accompanying right. John north of the wall. Knowing that we know that he was sent out to find Bran, mm-hmm. find Rickon, and probably to get rid of Jon too while he's right. at it, just to make sure there's no Starks left. Right. So that's that's not boding well right now. No. So, Especially with where they're going and who's there. Yeah. And speaking of who's there, mm-hmm. we got to see that fucking horror show <laughs> where we saw the, uh, the the really nasty prick was drinking wine out of Mormont's skull. Mm-hmm. Which was just offensive, right? On so many levels, because you know Mormont was such an awesome, you know, bear of a man, mm. and just it's like salt in the wound for uh, the viewer, right? It's like, oh, are you kidding me? Really? I remember watching. I was like, that's not, that can't be. And he's like drinking these, like, what's his, I can't remember what his name is now. He's like yeah. from the alley in alley in King's Landing now drinking wine, wine from Mormont's skull. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and then son uh, of a bitch. the other traitor, like the main guy, uh, Rask, the mm-hmm. one that John was beating up this, since day one, mm-hmm. the testicle. The testicle. As they kind of, so the guy called you him. Looked like a testicle. Yeah, he just kind of called him. So he looked like a testicle. So that's what we started calling him. <laughs> he was there, and then he had to sacrifice the last of Craster's children, mm, a boy, his son, yeah. to the uh, to the gods, as the the girls called them, the White mm-hmm. Walkers. The, the White Walkers are the gods, and. I am loath to argue with them. Right. When you're north of the wall, that there really would be any other godly, mm. godlike figure than the White Walkers. So right. He goes to do that, and then on the way back, he taunts a uh, ghost who's been captured by those assholes. Right. And I don't know how they did it. Like, it was foreshadowing that it was really subtle or something. But in, like when we were watching, I'm like, whatever happened to Ghost? Yeah, the, this, before this, we this even very got into episode. That. Yeah, we we're you know they're talking to John. We we're seeing John before they even said anything. Like, yeah. And I was saying, well, you know, using my book experience mm. and saying, like, well, you know, he's just wandering. He, yeah. can't, he didn't climb the wall, but whatever. And then, like, the very next scene, it's like, oh, no, he's there captured in the cage. I'm like, what? Because well, he threw the, the pig, like, entrails to the, what's his name? I thought it was that like, was human. Maybe it is. That looks like an arm. <laughs> he's like, he threw it out, he's like, go feed the beast. And I was like, what beast? Yeah. 
But it was before that even. I was like, whatever happened to Ghost? Yeah, I know. But, um, you know, because in, in the books it's just like, well, John, just like, you know, he, John tells him to, mm. you know, not to follow when he goes over the wall and Ghost does it and then eventually mm. they get reunited when God, John gets back to Castle Black. Mm. He opens the gate and, and Ghost is just chilling there and walks through and, mm. like, that's the whole thing. Interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's really like, in the book it's like a nothing thing. Like, John just senses Ghost is near, and mm-hmm. then he goes there, and he's just chilling on the other side of the wall waiting for someone to open the gate for him. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, Interesting. It's, yeah, it's like not even a thing. So I, I guess it's nice that they're doing something with it. Right. And then, of course, then that brought in Bran. Right. Because they were, they're north of the wall, and they were near Craster's Keep. Mm-hmm. Just coincidentally, they heard the baby crying, so Bran wargs into Summer, his wolf. Mm-hmm. And then, well, Summer gets caught in a trap. So that's probably how they got Ghost. Right. They had, you know, net trap. Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, at that point, then they try to go, because he saw a Ghost before he got caught. So then they try to go to see what's going on. And then they get captured by the assholes, too. And they're torturing Hodor, and they're, like, interrogating uh, the three of them. Mm-hmm. So that was just thoroughly unpleasant. Right. And now they found out that who Bran is. Right. They know he's Bran Stark. Yeah. So. Because uh, Jojen was having, like, a seizure. Mm. So in order to let them help him, mm. he revealed his identity, basically. Right. So that sucked. And then the last scene of the episode, mm. that, that just uh, some, a little something that I, was not in the books at all. Mm. Like, it maybe hinted at, but never actually explicitly shown. Uh, what happens to them babies? Right. We saw a uh, white, uh, I guess a white rider, because right. he was on a ho- dead horse, mm. pick up the baby and ride like through the goddamn wilderness to this ominous looking thing with an altar made of ice. Mm-hmm. And he puts the baby down and walks away. And then another even creepier looking fucker with like horns on his head comes mm-hmm. over and then takes the baby and like touches it mm-hmm. and turns the baby into like a white walker with right. baby. Like, its eyes go blue, and its skin gets, like, all of that color. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so... So, obviously, they can make White Walkers by bringing back the dead or turning humans. Uh-huh. Is what it's kind of showing, so... Yeah, so we'd be fucked. Right. It's interesting. I'm, there's so much build-up for this, I just can't wait to see something yeah. come of it. And, so, you know, it's funny... We already we, know there's a big army out there from, la- uh, yeah. from la- last well, season. Yeah, yeah last the season. Wildlings, yeah. Well, and the thing is, they're not so much... They want to conquer the wall. They're running from them, the right. White Walkers. They know that they're 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 wait, you know stirring and building strength. Right. So they they're trying to you know they're in a panic mode clearly because mm. they know what the hell is going on. So wouldn't it be nice if you know the uh, Knights Watch somehow convince the Wildlings to join them? Be like be we'll let you pass the wall, but you got to stay here and help us defend it. Right. <laughs> that would be convenient. It's like we'll make you honorary crows. Yeah. Get rid of the fucking cannibals. Let's do this. Yeah, well, <laughs> we didn't get a chance of that happening, though. Probably not very much. No. In all honesty. Really, I'd say the odds are pretty bad. Mm. So, people are screwed. Basically. I would have said, before the end of last season, it might have been a chance. When, you know, John was still sleeping with the wildling chick. And before she shot him with, like, three arrows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, before that, maybe... He got but, he got off lucky for breaking her heart. He did. He did get off lucky. But uh, yeah, like now, no, there's no way. I don't see the, you know, the and wildlings. Being a book reader, it's not mm. often that something in the show takes you by surprise, genuinely. Right. But that last scene with the White Walkers and the baby it was like, j- took me by complete surprise, <laughs> and I was sitting in my mouth just kind of agape, like, huh, the so, whole time. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, well, I was watching it. I was just like, you were looking at my face, and I was just like, huh. <laughs> And you started laughing at me because I had like a look of genuine, just complete surprise. Like, like that is not in the books. <laughs> I'm watching it. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? What's what happened? What happened? Except mystery. <laughs> but yeah, that was cool. It's and, you know that's the kind of thing in the books. Like it's because uh, it's all first person. Mm-hmm. Unless that person is actually seeing a White Walker with their two eyes, you, you don't, don't get to see anything. anything with them. So this what makes the show doing the show great. That it's. Uh, you know, that forced third person. Right. That you can actually do these things that are just hinted at. Like, you know, obviously when Sl- when Sam killed one, you know, mm-hmm. in the book we were, he was the pro- he was the narrator. Mm-hmm. So we got to see him kill the White Walker. We got to be in his head. Right. But other than that, you know, you haven't really seen any at all during the entire show. Right. You know, even that very first scene, the very first episode of the very first season, 
you know, that whole thing, that wasn't really in the books because, you know, we know nobody, none of them were protagonists. They right. Were, so, you know, we heard the guy who was getting beheaded talk about it, but that was it. Right, you didn't actually see them. So, pretty much more than half of the White Walker stuff that we've seen is new to the series, and mm. it's it's good because in a book you can build tension in a different way than you can with television. Right. You know, you can't just keep hinting that there's, you know, these evil guys off screen, just, just off, you know, behind the curtain. It's mm-hmm. like you can't do that on TV. Right. Especially a show this big. You have to remind people that these guys are out there and that they're a threat. Right. You know, you can just... Well, talking about it doesn't, isn't good enough. Because I read the first book, uh, the first book and a half actually I've read, I, and the, they, it's really more of a story that no one really believes, and then the two dead come back to life at the wall, and they're like, maybe this is really something to look into. They haven't really, they've never really confirmed it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at least not in the first book and a half, so. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Well, nobody south of the wall, like, south mm, of the, right. the Night's Watch believes them even when they do. Right. You know... They they try to convince you know all the everybody mm-hmm. and like they sent those letters out. Remember they sent the ravens right, they, and no one's even said anything. Yeah, about from the it. from the fists. You know, Sam after they were attacked by the White Walkers. Stannis did. That was the only person that said anything about it. I think. Mm-hmm. No, not even him. No. No, nobody. Not a person has even acknowledged. I think like the Joffrey and his council. Like they got the letter. There's mm-hmm. like, pff, you I'm know, with it away. Wasn't that Onion Knight, what's his name? Um, Davos. Davos. Didn't he get the letter? He got it, but he couldn't he read it. He can't read it. He couldn't, oh, he couldn't read, read it. it, yeah. Well, I think I think it's somewhere there, but yeah, mm. it's basically it's being ignored by everybody, if not outright dismissed, it's just malarkey. Right. Because, you know, even Tyrion, who was at the wall, was like, oh, protecting us from grumps and snarks. You know, it's right. like, he didn't believe it, and he was there. Right. So it's kind of an uphill battle. You go a thousand years without ever seeing one, people kind of start to believe all oh, it didn't exist. <clears throat> right. You know, they're, they're just bedtime stories told to keep kids in line. Mm. But it's turned out they're being true. <laughs> from what we've seen, at least. Yeah. You so. know, Ned Stark got the closest, and he didn't believe it. And the guy mm. told him, he's like, you know, a crazy man believes what he wants. Right. It's just like, oh, Ned... Ned, well, you know, Ned, Ned. Sam, Sam killed one. Yeah, but nobody believes that. Right. They've seen them too, and like, yeah. but they just don't believe he killed it. They don't. They believe that they exist. Right. Well, he just doesn't believe that fucking Sam could kill one. Right. John, John saw two dead men come back to life and yeah. set one of them on so fire. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, they they know something's going on, but they don't know exactly. You know. Yeah. So, so. that's going to be the big kind of swing moment. Is like, can they? Convince everybody right. that's living, you know, high and mighty, fat on the land down in the south. The, you know, they they keep killing each other over the throne. That hey, uh, you might want to put away your petty bullshit because there's a fucking problem. Right, coming from the north. You sons of and bitches. The prologue. We need backup. Yeah, the prologue to that problem is a hundred thousand person wilding army. Right. That's like that's like chapter one right. of this problem. That's not even the problem. That's just like the preface. Right. So, people gotta get their shit together, and they gotta do it quick. I think the X episode is gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I'm interested to see if John meets back up with Bran, or how that's gonna work too. So, well, if John's going there to take so, care of the mutineers, and mm-hmm. Bran's being held hostage, then yeah, yeah. There, unless you know Bran frees himself somehow, but right. that'd be almost you know, it'd be almost too uh, day sex machine like convenient. Yeah, yeah. If, if Bran can suddenly somehow. Get himself out of that situation, and then like he's crawling out the back while John's walking, walking in the front. In front yeah. It's like, come on! It's like, really, really, yeah. that's what we're gonna do. But. Like, if you're gonna put Bran there, you gotta have them reunite, right? So, and then of course, you know, John's like, "All right, you come back with me." And then Bran's like, "No, I have to go north. I have to go north." I don't know why Bran's talking like that. I just want to differentiate him from John, right? It's like, oh no, I go north. I go north. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, I no. go north. Goodbye, brother. <laughs> hold door, door, hold door, hold door. Hold door. Hold door. <laughs> so, that's what's going to happen, probably. probably. Hopefully. If they don't do that, then I'll be mad. And, yeah, so the next episode is going to be amazing. If, if John even makes it there. I mean, Jesus. Right, exactly. He's got a fucking psychopath hanging out with him now. Half me hopes that he can turn that guy over to, you know, to the brother, to the Black Brotherhood. Because he said he would say his vows before he went, so... Yeah. 
What do you think he's gonna? I don't think it's gonna happen. It's gonna be like well, it's gonna be like a Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker situation right. where he turns him no! turns him back to the light. Yeah. No, not that one. <laughs> Son of a bitch. They added that to that. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, make sure that you watch us again uh, next. Watch next week's episode and then come and listen to us again. Uh, we'll be discussing it the next episode. I know I'm doing weird hand signs and uh, gestures no one can see. Uh, make sure you get all of the information on all the stuff we're into at podcastdoom.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else you want to add, Todd? You listen or you die. You listen or you die.